वर इज अब गाइज कैसे हो आप लोग वेलकम बैक टू अनदर वीडियो ऑन द ट्वेंटी थ्री राइड्स चैनल ओवर द लास्ट फ्यू वीडियोज आई हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट वॉट आर द गुड पॉइंट्स दैट दिस मोटरसाइकिल ब्रिंग्स इन एट द अमेजिंग प्राइस पॉइंट दैट इट कम्स इन टू द मार्केट बट इन दिस वीडियो विल टॉक अबाउट सम ऑफ द फ्यू निगल्स डेट हैव बीन हाईलाइटेड बाय डिफरेंट ओनर्स across their limited tenure of ownership this bike has been in the market for almost 4 months since its launch uh, got into the hands of owners once the delivery started sometime in late december so typically around 2 to 2 and a half months is max what owners who have bought this machine have spent uh, on the himalayan so i'll be riding the himalayan today for about 100 kilometers i am going for a short spin so during the ride there are five major issues that have been highlighted in various forms i'll be talking about them in great detail so let's get on the bike and start the ride now let's talk about the first thing that i have experienced and that is the throttle response on this machine is a little laggy now this comes as a big surprise because this machine comes with a ride by wire throttle and typically a ride by wire throttle should feel very snappy when you are giving the mildest of throttle inputs and the bike should move forward instantaneously there should not be any sort of a delay but what i have felt is that there is a minor kind of a delay could be 0.5 second or 1 second at max between the time you give the throttle and when the bike starts reacting to that throttle input in a manner that you would expect it to now there are a couple of areas that you will feel this lag in real world riding scenarios number one is even in the uncoiled position of the throttle uh you will feel that there is some sort of a dead zone in the throttle uh as you can see right now this area this one there is a dead zone at the start while this is there in most of the motorcycles i think in the himalayan it's a little more than the other machines and practically speaking when you are riding this bike at around 75 80 km ph on a highway on a easy cruise and you want to execute a overtaking maneuver that is when you will feel the delay or lag in power delivery now this machine obviously has 40 bhp of power 40 newton meters of torque there is no issue with that but that slight 1 second delay in power delivery the reactiveness of the bike to the throttle input that you give is something that you will have to get used to it's not a deal breaker as i said but if you compare it to other bikes in the segment same price segment i should say the 390 adventure the scrambler 400x they will feel a lot more snappier than this machine so we are on the fifth 70 odd kmph i need to push through and if you if you are able to see the see my right wrist uh, opening the throttle and the bike responding when i open it the bike just doesn't fly like a ride by wire throttle system should make the bike fly now initially uh, during november and december the bike was new there was a lot of buzz around obviously the huge improvements that have been made on this motorcycle but these are finer details that I think you will experience when you ride this machine month over month over 4 5 months and that is when you will understand what I am talking about. The second thing that I want to point out is some of the errors that I have seen on the monopod display that is there in front of you. Of course this is a highlight on the new Himalayan. Over the last 4 months since I have ridden this bike in different sort of terrains and different weather conditions I have actually seen some warning signals come on the display. Now one of the signals uh that you would get is ye kya ho raha hai bhai mode change delayed acha typically for changing mode you press the m button here and you change the mode but while i was in couple of situations uh the there was a error message saying that you have to turn off the ignition turn it on mode change not allowed and kind of strange messages popping up 
ये क्या है फ्रंट स्पीड फ्रंट व्हील स्पीड सेंसर फेल्ड डिसमिस मतलब I feel that this is the first time Ari has gone to these limits of, uh, you know, introducing all these electronics on the Himalayan. So there are some bugs that needs to be addressed. Apart from that, another error sign that I have seen is the bike overheating and giving a warning saying, "Stop the vehicle immediately. The engine temperature is too high. Stop the vehicle." This is also something that I have actually gotten to know. I have not experienced this thing. It might be a case with a specific unit because one of the guys I am connected to on Instagram shared an image of this sort of an error coming on the Himalayan. If you experience this, you need to take your bike to the service center because he had an issue with the radiator, fan, and the coolant level on his motorcycle. And once those two things were uh, rectified, that warning sign went away. Another. a warning sign that i have seen coming in on the display and this is something that i experienced today while i was starting the motorcycle was battery level low needs to be charged uh now this has happened partially because that i have not ridden this bike for almost 3 weeks due to work commitments because of that maybe the battery was losing charge ideally this should not happen because you know other bikes that i have owned or ridden even if you uh you know use them after a gap of maybe 1 one, one and a half month the slightest of press on the self start button and the bike springs to life the engine springs to life here i was getting a little worried because when i used the self start button the himalayan made those uh you know typical sounds when the battery is low and the bike is not getting the proper sort of a charge from the battery to initiate ignition i was little scared that i'll be getting stuck but eventually it started so these are the three major electronic goof ups i have seen on the machine the third one is roughness of this machine now in my previous videos i have talked extensively about keeping your expectations at the right level uh, now if you compare this machine with the top end feel of the 390 adventure then obviously you are setting your setting up yourself for some uh, disappointing times over all across the rev band what would be a fair comparison to do for all of you guys is just compare it to what the previous himalayan was and from that it is leaps and bounds ahead in terms of engine refinement is it better than adv 390 at the top end in terms of refinement no is it better than the scrambler 400x in the overall usable rev range and the refinement in that rev range i don't think so i think the scrambler 400x feels a little more refined in the usable rev range that you will end up riding on most days coming from the previous himalayan they have made a huge improvement but if you have to compare with other bikes there are still you know smoother machines available of course definitely don't compare this to the smoothness on the single cylinder of a suzuki v storm 250 sx so keep your expectations in check and i think you should be fine one thing that i would actually recommend is whenever you are trying to make a final decision about going for a motorcycle take a pen and paper write down the pros and the cons that you have heard about or experienced your friends have experienced and then make the choice in the case of the himalayan 450 i feel that the pros that this machine has are much more than the minor niggles we are discussing about today i don't think it's a very big factor uh but it's for you to make that choice another area that has been highlighted is the top heavy nature of this bike i am used to riding bigger adventure motorcycles so i am used to managing that weight uh but even for beginners i don't feel that this is too much of a top heavy motorcycle it feels okay i mean while taking those sharp u turns 
I do not feel that it's going to tip over, uh, you know, in the slightest of turns that you will make those slow crawling U-turns. Even if we try and do something here, let's go inside and see if we can try out some maneuvers that you might end up doing. So we are crawling and if you have to make a u-turn i will do this i think it's more about the control on the throttle and the clutch that you need to maintain we are doing a u-turn here i'm not doing that fancy sliding sort of a stuff but even in this rough terrain where the bike tends to stall i'm doing all this in the second gear if i do it in the first i think it will be even more comfortable so not an issue you have to play with the clutch i for once have not faced any sort of major stalling issues we are just crawling in the low end now of course if you compare the torque delivery of this machine with the previous himalayan that one was a tractor so this is a completely new engine with a better top end so some things have been compromised here and there in terms of the low end torque but there are fixes to it for those who are facing any sort of stalling issues or while taking u-turns feel that this is very top heavy i think sometimes we just get swayed by what we hear in the media and start using those terms unnecessarily to convince ourselves that it's the fault of the motorcycle rather than the riding skills that one possesses if you do not have the right control over the clutch and the throttle the whole play that actually ensures that your motorcycle is moving forward without stalling then you can find hundreds of excuses and i think possibly this is one of those things that has you know just gained popularity that it's a top heavy motorcycle of course it's not a engine layout of a boxer sort of engine from bmw with lower center of gravity this is a single it will behave like one and if your expectations are reasonable it will deliver since we are on the open road let me just also show you what i meant by that delay in power delivery we are at 6 gear 80 kmph just have a look at how my wrist is uh, increasing the throttle input this one see this this light input should actually push the bike forward and increase the speed maybe to around 80 maybe around 5 6 kmph easily but it was stuck at 70 nothing major that was happening in terms of the acceleration on the machine while it was wanting to make that sound but the reaction time of the machine to kind of go to that speed was a little slow one thing that i would also like to point out is the effectiveness of this windshield now this windshield by the way is the touring windshield it's maybe about 10 centimeters taller than the stock windshield that comes on offer and if you have seen the video so far you would have heard the wind blast noise right that is immense for a adventure touring motorcycle like the himalayan now while this touring windscreen is taller i think what it lacks is the width and because of that a lot of wind comes from the side and hits you around the throat area and the chin area uh, with this current setup i know there are adapters that you can put in which will have additional width like something from pro spec and all i haven't personally tried them they should improve the wind blast uh, situation that one faces while riding this machine but the bigger issue is while that will add height to the windscreen it will the width issue still remains unaddressed and that will always be a source of big wind blast hitting you on the chest and the neck area 
so i wish royal enfield would have designed the windshield in a much more functional manner while aesthetically it looks great and requires some sort of investment in an aftermarket windscreen which i am pretty sure there are multiple options available for you to choose from right now and finally let us talk about the last issue that i have heard many people talking about and something that i have also experienced in the last few rides that i've done on this machine is the balancing now this is something that might not be put to test on a daily basis on your rides but to demonstrate the slight issue with balancing we'll have to do something that no one actually recommends or does actually on a ride see this i'm riding at around 80 84 85 kmph you leave the handle and the bike is going right uh you leave the handle still it is leaning to the right something i don't know what is causing that right lean on the bike leave it again i have to adjust with my body weight now typically this would happen because of the imbalance in drag on both sides i am assuming there is something that is causing a dra more drag on the right side as compared to the left whatever it is it is there whether it affects you on your day to day rides or on your long rides i don't think so because anyways this machine does not come with cruise control this balancing thing will be a factor on machines which have cruise control because that is when you will maybe leave your hand for a second or so and you need the bike to be stable it is stable but it goes right <laughs> so another thing that i have discovered over the last 4 months on this machine this is all i thought of sharing with you in this video if there are any other issues that you have found out let me know in the comment section would like to check if i also can see anything other that is some sort of a concern on this machine so far whatever five or six things that i have pointed out i don't think so any of these would be such a big issue that would change your decision about going for or not going for the himalayan 450 some minor issues will be there in most of the motorcycles so it's more about like i said weighing things and comparing the pros and the cons and for me as of now till date i feel that the pros outnumber the cons the slight niggles that i've talked about heavily so that is it for this video i will see you in the next one guys and till then ride safe